I would encourage you to fully experience the body experience of rage. What's happening in your body? And you'll find that it's not just an idea in your head. It's something that dominates your visceral experience of yourself. Your muscles, your breathing, your abdomen, your entire nervous system. And there's ways of just helping you experience it. I'm Dr. Angie Holzer and I specialize in yoga for mental health. And as we think about experiencing our healthy anger and rage, there are tools and ways to do that. Yoga, meditation, Tai Chi. Let's listen to Dr. Gabor Mate talk about the importance of experiencing these emotions and what we can do with them. So a person's rage can be triggered by something relatively minor, but all of a sudden this lava flow just explodes out of you. And the difference between healthy anger and suppressing healthy anger is also unhealthy for you. But just as healthy anger expresses itself, does its job, and then it's gone, rage, the more it explodes, the bigger it gets. There was a great neuroscientist, his name was Yak Panksepp, who tragically died a few years ago of cancer. And he distinguished a number of brain systems that we share with other mammals. <clears throat> they include care. He, he capitalized these. C-A-R-E, care. Then something he calls grief and panic. Then fear, lust, seeking, play, and rage. These are all brain systems that we have. They're all necessary for mammalian life. They're all necessary. By rage, he means the anger that arises when our boundaries are being transgressed. If I were to infringe on your boundaries, either physically or emotionally, the healthy response for you is to mount an anger response. No, get out, stay away. That's healthy. Healthy anger is in the moment. It protects your boundaries and then it's gone. It's not necessary anymore. However, if your boundaries were infringed as a child, but you could not express it, it doesn't disappear. It gets suppressed. It becomes almost like a volcano that's gurgling and bubbling inside you. Now, why did you suppress it? Now, when that's happening to a small child, the last thing you can afford is to be angry. Because if you get rageful at the boundary invasion, you're going to get hurt even more. So suppressing that rage becomes a survival mechanism. Nothing wrong with it. It's the right thing to do. You don't do it. Your brain will do it for you automatically as a way of preserving your life or your relative safety. But the rage doesn't go away. What happens then later on as an adult, something triggers you and all of a sudden it just explodes out of you and you have no control over it. Now it's no longer a response, a healthy response to the present moment, but it's a response to the past. And just as my hurt and sense of abandonment and then rage was triggered by my wife not picking me up at the airport, so a person's rage can be triggered by something relatively minor, but all of a sudden this lava flow just explodes out of you. And the difference between healthy anger and suppressing healthy anger is also unhealthy for you. But just as healthy anger expresses itself, does its job, and then it's gone, rage, the more it explodes, the bigger it gets. So that's the difference between healthy anger on the one hand, which is essential boundary defense. And by the way, so much parenting advice in this culture tells parents to force kids to suppress their anger. Really unhealthy advice. And there's healthy anger, then there's that rage that you and I have both experienced. Look, if you're going to punch a human being and there's a pillow to punch instead, better to punch the pillow. No question about that. But as a technique of dealing with it, no, that's not how you learn to process that rage because it needs to be processed. I would encourage you to fully experience the body experience of rage, what's happening in your body. And you'll find that it's not just an idea in your head. It's something that dominates your visceral experience of yourself. Your muscles, your breathing, your abdomen, your entire nervous system. And there's ways of just helping you experience it. There's a wonderful Buddhist lineage, spiritual meditation teacher called Tara Brach, who talks about rain, recognize, allow, investigate, and nurture. So you recognize, oh yeah, this is happening to me right now. Okay, I'm going to allow it. Not along it in the sense of, I'm going to act it out on somebody else, but I'm going to be with the experience. And then investigate, okay, what is this really all about? And then nurture that little person that had to suppress all that rage. View of it. But in other words, 
There's ways of working with it through the body that doesn't involve either suppressing it or acting it out, but in experiencing it. If, if I were to become abusive towards you right now in any way whatsoever, mm -hmm. y y you'd have fear there for sure. Mm -hmm. You'd also have a whole dose of healthy anger. Mm -hmm. I would say, stop it, get out of my space, get out of my face. Uh, you, know? you know what? I could laugh. I was in my studio with yeah. a comedian who's yeah. well known. He started uh, touching me inappropriately. And rather than say, stop, say no, say leave me alone, I laughed. I was just laughing uncomfortably because I didn't want to escalate the situation maybe. I didn't react in a way that I would have reacted had I seen him seen him doing that. Somebody doing else. That. Yes. Well, how you acted in childhood, you disconnect from your healthy anger. Mm -hmm. Because what would have happened to you if you had been angry as a kid? It wouldn't have been good. What would have happened? It would probably would have made my situation worse. Exactly. Yeah. So that disconnection was actually your organism's way of supporting you. Mm -hmm. That disconnection was your organism's way of helping you survive. Mm -hmm. So that freeze response that you described is actually self-protection in that situation. Mm -hmm. The trouble is that once we react that way, it gets wired in and becomes a default mode. Mm -hmm. So that even decades later, when you're completely powerful and you have every right and every capacity to say, stop it. <laughs> yeah. You know, or worse, you don't. You have a given nervous laugh instead. Mm -hmm. You know, because that, because you, you had, because to survive you had to freeze your anger. Mm -hmm. And, and so therefore, when you need it, it's not available for you. And that's what that disconnection is all about. So initially that disconnect is protective. Later on that disconnect, of course, just makes you vulnerable or, or makes you, um, you know what, the predator, mm -hmm. they always know. Yeah. They always know, they always know whose um, defense mechanisms have been disabled. Otherwise you just would have punched the guy in the face is what you would have done. Oh, yeah. or, or you yelled at him or you would have done something, you, you, you told him to get the hell out of your studio. And you, not, not only would you have done it, you would have filmed it and put it online. Mm -hmm. I, I still have stuff I could put online from it. <laughs> So I hope this has helped you better understand the importance of experiencing our emotions and expressing our healthy anger. Please like, subscribe, and comment.